I want to take a minute to introduce you to dynamic components. Dynamic components differ from other components or other things that you find in the warehouse in that the component is designed to be changed or aspects of it are designed to be changed. And if you think about it, it makes a lot of sense because there are so many different varieties of doors and windows and different configurations that you can make that it's highly useful to have components that you can customize so that you can really give an idea of how the look of your house is going to work with the windows and the doors. So typically companies have made collections around the types and styles of windows and doors that they offer. To find a dynamic component, you have to actually type the word dynamic into the search bar when you're in your components window. So I'm going to type in dynamic windows and I happen to know that Marvin has a large collection of windows. You'll find that lots of people and even you personally can create your own dynamic components. But for the purposes of this tutorial, I just want to look at some pre-made ones. You'll see here that you get a lot of different options. These are Marvin windows. If you read the description, it will give you more information. And here I can actually see that this is the entire dynamic components selection by Marvin. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to double click that. And if I double click, it brings me to the 3D warehouse. You may have to sign in before you can actually get into the warehouse. And if you do, just use your school email address and you might have to make a custom password for it. Here you'll see lots of options for windows and doors, especially some of those really big doors that have become really popular over the last few years and different sorts of configurations. So here's a configuration of several windows together with also transom windows. And these are casement because it says it's casement. You'll notice these arrows here the pointy part of the arrow is pointing at the hinged side of this particular casement window. You'll see that there are lots and lots of different ones. So read the descriptions when you're looking for something. And you'll also see other kinds of shapes that the company offers. Here's patio doors. Here's a, an outswing door. And you can see that this side would have the hinge on it. And it has this little side light too. So if you're looking for an exterior entrance door, this would be a good one. They also have French style doors and windows that have this kind of curve on it. They really have lots and lots of different types of windows and doors. This is a nice one too. They have bay windows. So if you wanted to try that, you could definitely use that. And here's one where you have two casement windows together. And so the configurations are really open. Now this is a tilt to turn hopper window, which basically means that the hinge side is here. So the top part opens, but that's not actually what I want. What I would like is an awning window. So this is an awning window. If I want to put it in my model, I'm just going to double click it. And I can get all the specifics here too. And you can see here it says hinged and windows. So I'm going to click download. It's going to ask me if I want to load it into my model. And I'm going to say yes. And then it'll appear here. Now you'll see that I've brought in some other windows as well and a sliding door. So obviously I'm going to have to rotate these. So let me do that now. And I could actually move both of these if I select both at the same time. So let's do that. We're going to go to the rotate tool. I'm going to click the right arrow key so that it lines with the red axis. I'm going to click away and I'm going to pull these up. So it's 90 degrees. All right. So here I have my window. So obviously I'm kind of floating in space here a little bit. So let's say I have my double hung window here and you can see that this is a six over six window. I'm going to select just the double hung. In order to change and see these options that come with this window, I have to go up to window and go to component options. And here it'll say Marvin Ultimate Double Hung Window. Yeah, I've got a lot of different options here that I can work with with this. It can be a little bit overwhelming, but what we're going to talk about today is how to change the color. So you can see it's green, but here the cladding material, that means the exterior 
of the window, the part that's going to be showing to the outside, has a color. And often manufacturers will have certain colors that are available to you. So if I didn't want the green, I could choose from these other four options. And maybe I'll go with a medium bronze here. You'll see that there are six lights in the top sash and six lights in the bottom sash. The light refers to these individual panes. You'll also see that this is a grill. This is sometimes what they call it, or a mutin is another word that you might see. And in this case, we have one on the outside and we have one on the inside. And you'll also know that, notice that the inside is a different color. That's because often colors or types of wood of the windows can be also ordered from the manufacturer. So let's say you wanted this to be wood, but maybe you wanted it to be primed white or painted white, you could actually order that from the manufacturer as well for an extra cost. Or you just leave it this color and then paint it yourself. We have the lights. We can decide whether we want the grill pattern on the inside or the outside by turning that on or off. And here you can see, yes, the grill pattern is on the exterior, but I can say no, and then I click apply, and that pattern is gone. Sometimes people do this to save money because obviously it costs a little bit more. It also depends if they're true lights or not, which means that the grill pattern, instead of just being a part that clips on, on more expensive windows, you can actually get true divided lights, which means that each one of these little pieces of glass are actually separated by the mutton. And that's truly how older windows were manufactured. But this is really one of the nice features, is changing this grill pattern. Right now, we have the upper sash, two lights high by three lights wide. And you can see this, that there are four options here in the window. So let's say I want to change this to a six over one window. That means that we have six lights in the top sash and no lights in the bottom sash. You'll see that in sort of more traditional windows. What we have to do is leave the top sash alone, but change the lights in the bottom sash. So in the lights, high bottom sash, I'm going to put zero. And in the lights wide bottom sash, I'm going to change that to zero. And then we're going to click apply. And so here now I have a six over one. I could also change this to a three over one if I wanted to have a different look. So to do that, I would go to the lights high sash and I would just change that to one. And then I would leave the top lights wide top sash to three. And now I get more of this sort of cottagey look, sometimes more found in um, cottages or maybe sometimes Victorian houses. So you can really play with whatever look you want. Maybe you want to have something that looks more like a traditional farmhouse. So in that case, I might go one wide and two high, so let's try that. Lights top sash one wide and lights wide top sash two. And let's see what that looks like. I have this. So sometimes that's more of a farmhouse look. So you can really customize these. The other thing you can do, which is really helpful when you're working with windows, and obviously we did the measurements, is you can change the height. This window is three feet wide, or 36 inches, and six feet tall, which is 72 inches. Let's say I want to change the size of this window. These windows are customizable. Instead of selecting standard size, go to custom size. Let's try a 24 inch window, which would give, which would basically be two feet by 60. And let's see what that would look like. I'm going to click apply. Might just take a minute to apply, but you can customize these sizes. So there's a real advantage to using dynamic components because one of the things you'll notice is it doesn't distort 
when you go and you make those changes. So let's just turn that back to three feet wide, which is 36 inches. You can also type in three feet. It will convert it for you. And maybe let's do six feet high. So I'm just going to type in six feet here. And I'm going to click apply and watch the window. There we go. Dynamic windows are really useful to have to customize your project.